Hi, and today we've gone to a place we've been a few times now, but for a very special weekend. Welcome back to Whitby, and today is a, a three-day part of a three-day event that's unique, very unique. Let's put it this way, you don't hear many people who are interested in pop music taking over a town for a day. Well, in Whitby, you do. Welcome to Goth Weekend at Whitby. Well, you don't see many of those sort of cars on the road nowadays, do you? That's the sort of thing that we're going to see all day walking around this place. It is going to be such an unusual day. It was only when we arrived at Whitby we realised what this weekend was. And are we glad we went? Yes, we are. It is fun. And I think anybody who's got the opportunity to go to one of these weekends really should. It is total fun. Is that Beetlejuice? It's Layla and myself today. Layla loves going out on these days out. On the way in, we saw buses and buses of coaches full of people getting off in gothic type dress it's looks like it's going to be extremely busy today Whitby obviously has a very unique personality with the history of Dracula with the Abbey on the hillside and a unique feeling to it, especially with one of the major exports from Whitby being the jade, the black precious stone that comes from around here. With the goth culture tending to be more darkly dressed, more, well, gothically dressed actually, then you can see what drew people here. If you like this sort of video, why not hit that subscribe button? We tend to do some very different videos, as well as giving you ideas for day trips and holiday destinations. But let's see what else this gothic weekend has to offer. The view from this spot inspired Bram Stoker, who died in 1912. He used to sit here while he was writing his story, Dracula. And as you can see from this plaque, now if we look around here, that is the view that he had. What a wonderful view he had of the harbour, the abbey, If you've watched one of our other videos, you'll have seen one of the other videos of Whitby showing you exactly where he was staying. But he was here for quite a few months while he wrote the story Dracula. Obviously not it, knowing that he was going to be so well received. Now we're just walking into the main way into town from the front and we can see how many people are dressed gothically or slightly different to what you'd normally expect on, uh, on a day in the middle of winter I mean this is November so it's not exactly uh, what you'd normally expect at the seaside at this time of the year definitely not like that but literally every other person that we're looking at is dressed somewhere different 
It's fantastic. It actually is fantastic. If you've watched any of my other videos, you'll understand that uh, I try to give you a bit of background to things. Now, Whitby have covered left, right and centre. So let me give you an idea of where this all originated from. This gothic weekend that happens twice a year. Now the Whitby goth weekend first started in the early 1990s but the goth culture actually originated from uh, the remnants of the punk culture in the early 80s <laughs> just look how busy it is there are so many people here and not all of them are dressed gothically I would say it's probably about 30% are dressed gothically and then everybody else has come to have a look around or they've brought people with them but those who've put the effort in, well done because some of these outfits must have taken an awful lot of effort to get to As I say, it actually began in the 1990s but what it first started off was a group of people just meeting up spending a few nights in a hotel and that was it but what's developed from there is something that's totally unique in fact it's the biggest meetup in the world of anything of this sort of nature while we were wandering around we saw people from Japan Australia America, Europe, all across the globe come to this meeting, this meetup, for three days of unique culture. Lobster. <laughs> Music is the heart of Whitby Goth Weekend, with a very diverse range of bands and DJs performing across multiple venues including the Abbey itself in fact uh, we've got another video that's coming up shortly which is where we visit the Abbey and you'll see for that it's a very unique place to begin with The roots of the modern goth culture can be traced back to the time just after the punk revolution went through. The end of the 70s, the early 80s, with bands like Susie and the Banshees, The Cure. There are quite a few uh, bands that you'd recognise the names of but wouldn't immediately assume were anything to do with goths. The culture behind it has grown up round the likes of literature of Edgar Allan Poe, Bram Stoker, who's obviously an awful lot to do with Whitby, and Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, those sort of things, as well as Hammer House of Horror, a very British thing, which if never watched, I would search it up on the internet. Very 70s, early 80s, and you can see where a lot of the people wearing clothes today have got their imagery from. few Tim Burton characters there, very well done. There's certainly over the last few years been more interest in the goth culture and I think a lot of that comes down to TV, films etc. The likes of the Tim Burton films, the likes of Werner Ryder in Beetlejuice, her outfits, even Beetlejuice's outfit himself, the likes of Helena Bonham Carter, her darker roles like in Fight Club and Harry Potter, they've all built up in the public these sort of outfits and you can certainly see from Wednesday 
the Adams Family TV series Wednesday that's now on uh, Netflix that a lot of people are dressing up as Wednesday Adams and to be honest they look good in these outfits they are spending time on them making them look right some of the outfits are literally really must have taken weeks and weeks just to even plan as we're walking along why don't you see how many Wednesday Adams you can see there's more than one or two as we're walking around we did notice quite a few younger children who've taken on board a different sort of film Ghostbusters, well it's still spooky etc and they were dressed up as Ghostbuster outfits with this particular weekend being just after Halloween you do tend to see a number of younger children dressed up in their Halloween outfits and they fit right in in this place fantastic weekend for the kids as much as it is for the adults Right, now we're walking up to what is the best fish and chip shop in the world or at least one of the best and you can see there's a queue going to the takeaway store there's a queue waiting to get into the cafe bearing in mind that Whitby has lots and lots of very good fish and chip shops but this one is just world famous if you come to Whitby you're going to have to go there if you can get in the queue If you look over there, there's somebody in uh, pre-World War One German outfit, very unique, and Herbie. Yes, Herbie's come to visit the Goth Weekend, and he stayed too long. He's got a parking ticket. Oh dear. Many unusual visitors that arrived this weekend. And there's always plenty of space to have a nice little drink. And the ice cream parlours were selling black ice cream. And they were certainly enjoying it. Don't know what flavour it was quite get chance to buy any. Occasionally you'll find the Dark Lord himself walking among the streets. Well it might be Dracula. <laughs> Maybe it is. One of the most difficult and unexpected issues that you face is the fact of crossing the bridge. Now this is normally, well, these looks a bit scary. I told you it was near Halloween. Anyway, was crossing the bridge, but purely because the number of people crossing it, you came to a standstill. 
literally block solid. I mean, eventually we got through it, but it literally was a complete standstill. Well, we've come to it before, it's not been an issue whatsoever. There's cars running in the middle, but for the weekend, cars aren't allowed to cross the bridge during the daytime, and it just took us 15 minutes to cross the bridge. Absolutely unbelievable. But as I say, we got to the other side. Once you've crossed the bridge, this is where the more touristy side of Whitby is. The other side, you've got tourist shops, you've got your fish and chip shops, you've got amusements. But this is the touristy type of shops. There are actually shops there that are purely aimed to go on to Goths, which you can understand. Um, but what we're doing now is walking up towards the Abbey, and you'll see that the streets are full of jet shops, ornaments, there's a few people who have unusual nature stood about, but uh, that's what you expect this weekend. <laughs> but most of the shops in here tend to be more orientated towards people visiting the town, as opposed to people actually who live in the town. left just a bit further up past these people here is the market square that would have been where the fish would have been brought into the town and then sold on to go to other parts of the country. Whitby is still one of the main areas to get quality fish that's why the fish and chip shops are so fantastic around here. Every corner seems to have something spooky going on this week. Some of the outfits are very unique, very, very good, but very unique. Even the odd Disney character walking past. What witch wouldn't like a nice pub? Plenty of them in Whitby. As I said, some people have spent a lot of time getting their outfits together. Totally underdressed in our coats. Certainly compared to some people. Is that death I see before me from Scrooge? Certainly resembles him. And whoever it is, is very. <laughs> You can see, purely and simply, the amount of people that are all walking up towards the Abbey. Yeah. It's just absolutely cram-packed. Well worth it, but packed. I'm imagining that a lot of shops do an awful lot of business these weekends. An awful lot of business. Close your eyes if you're scared of clowns. Obviously, 
the most spooky time of the day for goths and witches is on an evening. And you can still see there are plenty of people about, even in such a dark night as I recorded this. Unfortunately my camera is not really designed for this sort of light so I apologise if the picture quality isn't that great. As you can see there's still plenty of people about, uh, the pubs are obviously still open, there's plenty going on. It's not a situation of people just coming for the day, people are coming here for the full weekend, even if the taxi driver does try to run people over. But the outfits, the atmosphere, it is not a dark atmosphere going to these sort of ends. It's all people having fun, having time together, just enjoying a different idea. And yes, you'll see your Draculas, you'll see your Wednesday Adams, you'll see your Beetlejuice, and you'll see people wearing Victorian type clothing. It's just a good, fun day out, something very unusual, and something you won't see anywhere else. And that includes werewolves posing for photos. But uh, I would strongly say, if you've got the time to go out to somewhere like this, do so. It's one of those things that I'll never forget. Unique, bit of fun, family can go and enjoy it. But at the end of the day, it's a seaside visit with a bit of a twist. Yet it's still late at night, and look what we have outside the Magpie Cafe. There's still a queue. As I say, if you want to experience good quality fish and chips, that's where you need to stand. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you want to go visit Whitby, those are the dates for 2025. If you're nearby, I'd strongly advise it. And there's a video coming up that YouTube thinks that you'll enjoy. See you on the next one. Bye for now.